Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to Made Every Day. Today we're talking about tote bags, because whether you're a new sewer or an advanced sewer, there's always time to sew one more bag, right? First, we'll start with a basic tote bag, and then we'll mix it up a little. We'll box out the sides and the bottom, and we'll add my favorite part, vinyl straps. So let's get started. If you've never sewn a bag before, you're gonna be amazed at how simple the process is. And then you're gonna love how fun it is to mix it up with a variety of fabrics. You can add a pocket, you can box out the sides and bottoms so that it can hold bulkier items in your bag. This particular bag is reversible, which I love because then it goes with twice as many outfits. But today we're gonna to start with a basic tote bag. I've broken the project into four simple steps. Here's what you need. About a half yard of fabric and one and a half yards of twill tape for straps. You can use a variety of fabrics for your bag. My favorite types are heavier cottons like canvas, twill, duck cloth, upholstery fabrics because they give some structure to your bag and they keep it from getting holes over time. Now you can make your bag any size you want. Make it huge, make a little tiny one for your child's toy. But here are some dimensions for a basic book bag or purse. Cut two rectangles of fabric, 18 by 16 inches, or as I'm gonna do here, fold your fabric in half on your cutting mat Take your rotary cutter and your ruler, cut it 16 by 36 inches. Now set your fabric aside and let's talk about the straps. You can use a variety of materials for the straps as well. In fact, you can make it out of the same exact fabric used for your bag. You could use repurposed leather or rope. But one of my favorite items is this heavier cotton canvas twill tape that you find at the fabric store. It comes in white, cream, and a variety of colors. And an easy thing that I like to remember is that one and a half yards will give me two straps that are 27 inches long, which is great when I'm making a bunch of bags as gifts. All I have to remember is one and a half yards. Okay, so just take this, just cut it right in half. Now we have two straps, we have our fabric, we are ready to sew. Let's move on to the next step. With the right sides of your fabric together, we're just gonna sew down both sides. So take your fabric into your machine, we're sewing on a straight stitch here, and do a little back stitch at the beginning, and then just sew straight down. You can use about a half inch seam allowance, a quarter inch seam allowance. Sew whatever way works for you. Okay, when you get to the end, do a little back stitch again. And then, what I love on my baby lock machine here is I have this little cutting function cuts all the thread for me, it's fantastic. Okay, flip it over and let's do the other side. And there we go. It's basically a bag already, but let's move on to the next step. Now we're gonna hem the top of your bag. So start by turning it right sides out, and you wanna make sure that you poke all those little corners out. There we go, you can use your finger, you can use a little chopstick. And now we're gonna use our iron to press the top under and create a hem. So start first by ironing it under about one fourth to a half of an inch. You just wanna go all the way around. Okay, now let's press it under another one inch. And pressing is always really important. It is the key to making your stuff look less homemade and more professional. I know I'm always saying that, but it really is true. Okay, we're done ironing. Now let's sew this in place. So just stick it under your machine. You can pin it in place or you can just start sewing. And you wanna be close to this edge that we just folded under. Start sewing, do a little back stitch at the beginning. And then just go all the way around. Now the thread color that you use here is kind of important. You can use a color that camouflages with your fabric or you could use one that kind of gives a pop of color. And we are ready to move to the next step. We're ready to sew our straps. Now you need to decide what kind of look you're going for. You could sew the straps to the inside of your bag, like this, or you could sew them to the outside of the bag, or if you had cut them extra long, one cool thing is to sew them continuously, down the front, around the back, back up the other side to create your straps. That's kind of a cool look too. But today, I'm just gonna sew mine to the outside of the bag. Okay, take your twill tape, and then fold it under just about a half of an inch, just to cover those raw edges. 
And then we're going to measure about two inches from the side seam of our bag and about one and a half inches down. This does not have to be precise. You can do any type of measurement you want. I find that that's kind of a good general spot. Pin that in place. Now let's do the other side. Make sure your strap is not twisted. Fold it under. Measure two inches and then pin that side in place. Now the way we're gonna sew this is that we're gonna sew a rectangle around the edges and then to reinforce the strap, we're gonna sew an X through it. And plus, it looks kinda cool. Stick it under your machine and then I'm sewing pretty close to this edge of the fabric that we ironed under. Do a little back stitch at the beginning. When you get to the end of that, just leave your needle down, lift your presser foot and pivot. Then you can go down the other side. And you know, I talked about our thread color on our bag. This is another place where you could choose kind of a fun color to make it stand out. Because when we sell that X, if you use like a bright color, it would look pretty cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew in a diagonal. So turn it all the way. So from one side down to the other side. Back stitch at the end and cut your threads. Now let's do the other side. Just sew in a diagonal across. Okay, now we're gonna sew the other strap the same exact way. Take your strap, fold it under, put it in place, and then what I like to do with this one is that sometimes, you know, I've gotten a little bit off on my measuring with the first one, is that I'm just gonna kind of hold it up and see how it measures against the first one. So let's come over here, see how I'm kind of putting these around each other. Then I know that when I'm holding this in the end, it's gonna be perfectly in place. Stick that, pin it, and then all we have to do is sew, and you're totally done. Look at that, we just made a really cool tote bag. Now let's try a box out version. Now we're gonna amp up our bag by making it a boxy tote, which means we're gonna box out the bottom and the sides to reinforce the bag and to make it easier to hold things inside. I also like mixing textures together. So for the straps, we're gonna use vinyl. Here's what you need. A half yard of fabric and about a fourth of a yard of vinyl fabric. Now I've already cut my bag pieces as we did in the other steps, 18 by 16 inches. And for this particular bag, I like using two pieces rather than just one because it makes it easier to box out the bottom and sides when we get to that point. Now let's talk about our vinyl. You can buy this at fabric stores. It comes in a variety of colors and you know that I like bright colors. So for this one, we're going to be using yellow. And the cool thing about vinyl is that it doesn't fray at the edges, which will make it real easy to just fold it in half and sew right down the side. So let's cut our straps. You can cut your straps any width that you want, but I'm gonna make mine skinny straps for this bag. So I'm gonna cut them one inch wide, which means they'll be a half inch when I fold them in half. I have my fabric folded in half just to make it really easy for when I cut. I'm gonna cut it 27 inches long by one inch wide. Move it down and cut your other strap. Now we have our straps cut, we have our fabric for our bag. Let's move on to the next step and let's start sewing. With right sides of your fabric together, we're gonna to sew down one side, around the bottom, and back up the other side. Use a half inch seam allowance or a quarter inch or three eighths, whatever you used on your other bag. When you get to the bottom, lift your presser foot and pivot it and go around the bottom. Okay, I've made it back to the end and look at that. We're ready to finish off the top of the bag. Turn your bag right side out, pop out the corners, then iron the top in place. Iron it under a half of an inch first. Now iron it under another inch. And then sew it in place. And we have made a basic tote bag, but let's move on to the next step and let's box out the bottom. Now we're ready to box out the bottom and sides. And it might sound complicated at first, but once you do it, it'll make sense. So just follow along the steps. I have my bag turned inside out. I'm gonna stick my hands inside. And what I wanna do is I want the bottom seam of the bag and the side seam of the bag to be touching each other. So I'm going to push them down and I'm looking inside and look, looking at the lines of those seams and making sure that they're laying right on top of each other. Press it down with your hands, and as you can see, what I've done is I've made a 90 degree angle at the bottom of my bag, 
which has my seam going right down the middle. And if I turn it this way, you can see the two seams are now touching each other. That's perfect. You just wanna press that in place with your iron. And now what we wanna do is we wanna draw a line to determine where we wanna box out the bottom. Now the length of this line depends on how boxy you want your bag to be. If you measure down one inch, you're gonna get two inches of box on the bottom. If you measure down three inches, you'll end up with six inches of box on the bottom. I kinda like somewhere in between, so I'm gonna measure down two inches. And I'm measuring from this very corner point where these two seams came together. So place my ruler right there. Place a mark two inches down from that. And then I'm gonna turn my ruler perpendicular to the seams and just draw a line. And as you can see, my line is now four inches. Okay, let's do the same thing with the other side. I've drawn my two lines and I've placed pins right where I'm gonna sew. But the last thing I wanna do before I sew those in place is to just check it out and see how it looks. So place my hands inside. Make sure that that's the amount of box that I want, that everything is symmetrical, because the last thing you want is to sew it in place and then you find out it's kind of like askew and wonky. So just make sure everything looks good before you sew. Okay, looks pretty good, we're ready. Do a little back stitch at the beginning and then just sew all the way down. Now let's sew the other side. Trim the excess fabric from the corners and I'm cutting about a half of an inch from that seam that we just sewed. Do the same thing on the other side. Now turn it right side out and be ready to be amazed at the boxed out tote that you made. Cool, look at that. That's really awesome. We just need to add some straps to it. So let's move on to the final step. We're ready to sew our vinyl straps. But first, when you're sewing with vinyl or oilcloth or leather, it might have a tendency to get stuck under your standard presser foot. So there's a few tricks you can use to help with that. First, you could place a little bit of transparent tape on the bottom of your presser foot, and that sort of helps it glide through. Another option is to fold tissue paper around the fabric, sew your seam, which helps perforate the paper, and you can tear it off when you're done. But I find that honestly the easiest method is to use one of these handy Teflon presser feet. My baby lot comes with them, most sewing machines sell them, and they fit on really easily. Take your standard foot off, stick it on, and when you sew, your fabric will just glide through much more easily. Okay, we're ready to sew. Take your first strap and fold it in half with the wrong sides facing each other. We're gonna sew right on the outside of the fabric. And we're gonna sew pretty close to the edge of that fabric. Do a forward and back stitch, and I'm just using a standard straight stitch here. We're just gonna sew all the way down. Now I'm not pinning this in place because if you put pins through vinyl or leather, it creates holes. So I'm just holding it and folding it as I go. Okay, we made it to the end. Do a little back stitch, and there you go. We just made a really cool strap. Let's do the other one. We're ready to attach our straps to the bag. So measure two inches from the side. And remember that you don't wanna place any pins through your vinyl or it will leave a hole. So attach it with something like a binder clip or a wonder clip. Just place it right there. And it's great because it holds it in place until you're ready to sew. Do the same thing on the other side. Two inches over. And I'm sewing my straps on the outside again just because I think it looks kind of fun. Okay, let's sew those in place. I still have my Teflon foot on the machine. I'm gonna remove my clip, stick it under, and we're gonna sew just like we did last time. I'm gonna sew a rectangle around the strap. I'm not gonna sew an X this time just because that strap is so skinny. And if I wanna go slow here, I can adjust my speed right over here because sometimes I just get a little pedal happy and start going too fast. But this is a time when I wanna have a little more control and make sure I'm making nice straight lines. And there you go. Just like that, you sewed a really fantastic boxed out tote bag. But let me show you one more secret that's inside. To help it stand up even more, I cut a piece of cardboard the same dimensions as the bottom of my bag. I took a hot glue gun and glued fabric all the way around. And then you can just put it right inside your bag and it will help everything stand up a little bit better inside. There you go. For more ideas and tutorials, check out my website, madeeveryday.com. And for more information on sewing machines, check out babylock.com, where it's all for the love of sewing. I'll see you next time.